In this video, I want to talk about one shots, samples, velocity, and how all those relate to each other. So to start off with, we have two audio events over here. Both of these triggered from the exact same drum virtual instrument. I've basically printed them to audio, normalized them, and then trimmed them back to minus 12. But they are coming from the exact same instrument. Let's listen to the first one. Okay, so just a pretty standard modern sounding kick drum. Now let's listen to the second one. Again, coming from the exact same virtual instrument. Okay, so huge difference in tone there. First of all, on this one, you can hear some ambience. We hear the point, we hear the transient attack, the detail of the beater hitting the kick drum. On this one, we hear a lot of sustain of that low end. We can also hear that it's not played as hard. It's not performed as hard. And if we take a look at the MIDI information, all of these over here were triggered with the velocity at 127. Whereas this one, I basically just dialed it back down to where I could hear it and it was still audible as a kick drum. It wasn't completely gone, but it still had a little bit of, you know, sound that sounds the same as a kick drum. So what can we deduct from this? Well, something that happens in the reality of playing instruments is that you can play things loud or you can play things soft. And depending on how you play things has a huge impact in how they sound. Now, you can take something that was played really loud and turn it down and that doesn't make it sound soft. And conversely, you can take something that was played really soft and you can turn it up. And just because you've done that, that doesn't make it sound loud because these two things aren't linked, they're relative to each other. So why do I go through the all of this to show you these examples? Well, just kind of to understand that, you know, samples that they come, they're a static snapshot of something, and they're usually captured at louder levels or a medium to loud level, and then we can trigger those back. Now, in certain genres like EDM, for example, it is completely acceptable. And in fact, I wouldn't do anything else. I would want to have a loud kick drum of four on the floor that is just completely cutting through the mix at a 127 velocity. I wouldn't necessarily want to have different variations of velocity. And if I did, I wouldn't necessarily want that to impact the tonality of things. Now, you could take other styles of music. This could be anything from funk, pop, rock where you have these different velocities and different tones based on the velocity that you trigger. And another thing to point out is that when you talk about virtual instruments these days, they're done extremely well. They are sampled very deeply. They go through different levels of the velocity, and then within each of those levels, they're doing potentially 10 or 15 different variations of samples. So anytime you play these new virtual instruments or you're sequencing with them, they sound incredibly realistic. They sound really amazing, to be honest. Now, if we take a look at an instance of impact, and in this case, I'm just gonna solo out my velocities and let's take off the filter. If we listen to this kick drum sample, this is just a decent modern sounding kick drum sample. It's just something that I pulled from one of my Studio One sound sets. Really nothing special by any means, just a good sounding kick. The thing about this kick drum is it will always sound like this as a one shot. Now there's some things that we can do and there's some adjustments that we can make with an impact that change the way it plays. So let me solo this out. First of all, let's go to this first section. I'm also going to uh, synchronize my editor to the arrangement. So as I select one of these, it's going to synchronize what we're seeing in the editor. So if we take a look at this sample played at 127, it's just going to be full volume across the board. This is no different than if you had a keyboard or an atom, for example, and you've clicked full level. It doesn't matter if I gently tap uh, the drum pads or if I hit them as hard as I can. It's going to be playing the sample at full level at 100% just in the level though. Now, let's take a look at this example. Okay, so notice that if I select the very first note, you can see that that is 13 in terms of the velocity, and the very last note, that's 127. So, with our velocity sensitivity uh, in the amp setting set to 100%, let's have a listen to how this plays. Okay, so it's going through, it's starting off at a lower velocity and it goes to 127. So notice that the level changes, but we don't hear any difference in the tonality. The actual sample, it's just a loud sample being played lower. 
like I said, in some cases, depending on how you need things to cut, this might be perfectly fine. But in other genres of music, you need to be able to have the flexibility to make things sound a little bit more natural, especially if you're doing a sample replacement and you're working with a very specific one shot that's either been provided to you or you've found the perfect one shot and it doesn't work in the lower parts. It just doesn't seem to sound right. I want to explore some different ways that we can make it sound a little bit more natural. So that's what the velocity set to 100%. Now let's back this off to zero and let's play that same section. Notice that when the velocity sensitivity in the amp setting of Impact XT is set to zero, it doesn't make a difference. Now what happens if we split the difference and we go to say 50%? Okay, so what that's doing is it's basically, the top is the top, it's not really compressing that, but what it's doing is it's bringing the bottom up. So instead of it starting off really low in level for the lowest velocity stuff, it's kind of starting up here in level. So we still have a difference, but it's not as dramatic. It's not like a ramp like this, it's more like a gentle ramp up. So that's one thing that we can keep in mind and that we can use to our advantage. For the next example, I'm gonna actually pull the velocity down so that the velocity of this instrument part, it doesn't affect the level that it's playing at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage this filter. Now have a listen. So I can dial in a frequency over here, anything that I want. And this is basically, in all honesty, this is basically the same as if though I was taking an EQ and just putting a high cut on this or a low pass filter and choosing a slope of 24 dB per octave. That is basically what this filter section is. Depending on which, um, which filter that you've chosen, in this case I'm using a low pass 24 ladder. There's zero ladder, low pass 12. There's also band passes and high passes, which are, you know, they start to go in filtering out the middle or filtering out the low section. But for this case, let's leave it to the default setting, which is a high cut at 24 dB slope. So if I set this and I leave it somewhere, this is just a great way if you have a sample that just has too much edge or too much attack, you can just engage the filter and you can adjust your cutoff till it sounds like it fits a little bit better. Now the question is, how can we use the velocity information within this to get it to sound a little bit more natural? So if you hover your cursor over the velocity knob over here, you'll see that you have velocity to cutoff. Now what this basically does is instructions to Impact XT about how sensitive you want this performance to be to the actual velocity based on the filter cutoff that you've set. So what do I mean by this? Well, if I play it with the velocity cutoff set to zero, we know that there's no change. It acts almost as if though it's a static EQ move, the same thing as if we were doing with Pro EQ. Now what happens if I dial this up a bit? Let's have a listen to this at about somewhere around 55%. Notice this, as we go through, as we start with the lower velocity information, we hear that filtered sound, which would be kind of realistic in terms of what we would expect in real life. If I was gently tapping the kick drum beater, as I started to tap it louder, the change of the kick drum would sound. Now, in addition to the change of the kick drum sounding, uh, the level would sound different, but this filter in its own is producing a perceived level change because we hear mid-range differently and we hear different frequencies differently. So as this is ramping up, we're getting that level change, but not necessarily just from level, but from the EQ. As it goes really loud, it opens up and we're hearing more of the full sample. Okay, so now what happens if we go in the other direction? I'm pretty sure you can understand. This is kind of the inverse of that. Have a listen. Now you're not gonna hear that unless you're listening on good quality headphones or you're listening on a decent set of speakers that re can reproduce low end. But basically, by the time we get to about here, um, we're pretty much dropping off in terms of the signal. That's because what's happening here is it's actually closing off the filter more as the velocity gets louder. Okay, so enough geeking out. How is this useful and how can we use this information to our advantage? Well, first of all, I'm going to just copy these settings as a starting point. And I have brought in some tracks from another song or another session that I mixed. And if we now open up, actually, let me just, let's mute this and mute this. Now, if we open up the drums folder, notice that I have a kick drum over here. I'll open this up, I'll make sure that my 
Everything's playing. Don't need my bus compressor. Let's have a listen. Oh, it looks like I muted everything. Let me unmute them. We'll have a listen. Truthfully, this kick drum sounds perfectly fine. It's got a decent tone. But one thing to make note of over here is in any audio event in Studio One, you can right click and within the audio section, we have the ability to detect transients. Now, when we detect these transients, it's basically going to give you a slider. So now if I go to the um, audio bend menu over here, we can adjust the threshold of this slider. And then it will either increase or decrease the amount of bend markers that we have. Now within the bend markers, one thing that's kind of cool uh, with Studio One is that they maintain their relative dynamics uh, in relation to each other. What I mean by this is that, let's go to our Impact XT instrument. We're gonna paste the same sample that we were using in the previous example. I'm just gonna drag this audio event to the instrument part. And notice now we have all these different um, transient detection points over here. And all of these have different velocity information because it's maintained the, the velocity information from the audio event that it was basically pulled from. So first things first, I need to put this in the right pitch. So let's bring it up one. And now if I was to solo out impact, oh, keep in mind we have that filter. Let's bring our velocity back to zero and let's take our filter off. Let's also adjust our amp velocity so that it's at 100%, meaning that it's going to treat all of the velocities for level. Okay, so like I said, we're hearing that one shot playing back in its uh, full level. We are getting a difference of level, but the tonality is not changing. Now let's see how that sounds in relation to the rest of the track. Okay, let's listen to the original. Okay, well, we have a massive level difference there, but that aside, we also have that tonality change that happens when we um, listen to the kick drum, it's popping out too much. Okay, so we know that our velocity in the amp section, we know that the velocity percentage, we know what that does, and we know that we can basically make it either less or more sensitive to the velocity information that it's reading from the instrument part, this information right over here. But we also know that we can make that filter adjustment cutoff. So let's leave this here for now, and let's bring in the filter cutoff, and let's set our cutoff to somewhere that just sounds right. We'll kind of tune this by ear. And I'm gonna adjust the velocity sensitivity. Let's start off with it at about 50%. Meaning that it's going to be looking at the lower velocities and the lower the velocity is, the more closed off or the more filtered it's going to sound. And then the louder velocities as we approach the 127 range, it will open up and we'll get more of that natural sound which is the way that the one shot or the sample sounds, which is kind of being triggered at a louder level. So now let's have a listen. Now, truthfully, you could even pull this back all the way. And just as a reminder, without the filter, velocity set to 100%. Okay, so what we need to do here is just kind of split the difference and mess around with these parameters all in relation to each other and see whether we can get so something sounding natural. I think that we can probably pull this down to even like 40% because this filter cutoff that's linked to the velocity to cutoff at 50%, as the velocity gets louder, it opens it up, and as it gets quieter, it filters it down, and that act within itself just changes the actual level or the perceived level. So it's all a matter of kind of blending this against the rest of the tracks. So honestly, I think somewhere with the velocity on the amp at around 40% and this over here, yeah, it could work here, could work a little bit higher and adjusting this uh, velocity to cut off, just kind of going by ear until we find something that works. Bring in the other one. 
pull this down a little bit, blend it to taste. So I think that right there sounds honestly really good and I would be happy to use that. So kind of the moral of the story here is it's great to have these virtual instruments and I have some of them. I don't have a ton of them. I just have a few. Um, Addictive Drums, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Get Good Drums, Steven Slate Drums. They're awesome and they, they're, they're awesome to use and they can give you amazing results, especially if you don't have the ability to work with a real drummer. Now, what happens for the person that is starting off, maybe has access to Studio One Sphere or Studio One Artist, and they need to work with samplers and they have access to maybe some one shots through Splice or maybe you're mixing something and they've provided you a sample. Also, I know a lot of mixers that just have, for the last 10 or 15 years, they have a, like a folder that has maybe four kick samples and they use them on every record they mix. They have one that's got a really pillowy sub low end. They've got one that has a ton of point. They've got one that's got a mid-range cut. Maybe something that could even be an electronic drum machine type sample that they're mixing in just to give a bit of girth and weight at around 100 or 200 hertz, something like that. If that's the case and you just need to kind of like filter these in, making minor tweaks to these adjustments here, uh, the velocity with respect to the amp, which is by, based on the level, and also the filter, the filter cutoff, and the velocity to cutoff. Arguably, you could even go at one step further and we could talk about the fact that when you hit something that it could potentially go a little bit sharp and then come down. It's the same principle. You can set this and you can set the velocity to pitch and you can adjust exactly how much to paste on depending on how hard the velocity hits are. I don't really do this that much. I have in the past. This is something I used to do actually manually when I, when I mixed in Pro Tools. I would come in and not only would I change the level of individual kick drum samples that I was using, if I was sample replacing, I would also adjust the filter cutoff and I would actually render that in. And in some cases I might move a super loud hit up like 20 cents sharp or something like that, just to make it sound more realistic. Because like I said, depending on the genre again, certain genres, it doesn't sound right to have um, a louder velocity kick drum hit playing just at a lower level. Sometimes you need a little bit of both. And in those cases, I think it's really useful to have a really solid understanding about how you can use the filter cutoff and velocity to cut off and uh, how you can adjust the velocity on the amp section to be either less or more sensitive. And then also just the fact that we have audio bend uh, and, and bend markers that are built into Studio One that will actually maintain the relative dynamics on uh, something like this, like a conga track or a kick drum or a snare drum. Once you have all this information, it's very easy to use free tools and a really awesome sounding drum sample to get really killer drum replacement and something that fits naturally within a track without you having to go in and adjust each one of the velocities and get them to sound right. Just doing something as simple as adjusting the filter cutoff and the velocity to cut off and tweaking the amp sections, as long as you have a really decent sounding sample as a starting point, it can be a really great way to get your drum samples to sit in perfectly. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.